Hi everyone, so today we're going to do a little bit of a Christmassy themed thing and we're going to do something that you could use as like a design for a Christmas card or you could just use it for practice, it's totally up to you. So we're going to do um, a bauble. I'm just going to do one bauble but then I'm going to show you how you could sort of like, you know, add another few to it to make a, a nice design if you wanted to. So we're going to draw the bauble. Um, on the paper as well so we um, I'll do you a line drawing just in case you you need one you haven't got a circular stencil or whatever um, but I'm going to show you how I'd go about plotting it out as well so I'm going to do my ball ball in red you can use whatever color combination that you want to um, I'm just going to do it in red and make sure that you've got um, a few hues of red so you've got from your darkest or sorry a few hues of color so you've got from your darkest to your lightest values so that um, we can work in the light and shade so let's just get cracking and uh, I'll talk you through as we go so first thing to do we need to plot our ball ball out so I've got my little circular well big circular stencil here so we're going to put it in the middle of the page so what I want to do is I want to have my ball ball so we're going to have our circular shape then we're going to have our little top little top lid on it and then we're going to have a little hook and a ribbon coming off so I'm going to use this actually no we're going to use the uh, the smaller size because if you're thinking of Christmas card we want to keep it um we want to keep it quite small okay so on my circular stencil I've got some nice guides that show me uh, a sort of a cross section so I can plot out and make sure it's perfectly in line. So I'm just going to very very lightly go around my stencil with my pencil and plot in my circle. Now here is my centre top line so I'm just going to make a little notch there so that I know exactly where the center is okay so I've got my circle so now we've got a neck that comes off a bauble so if we say we want our lid to be sort of this wide then from this circle I just want to stroke up and create a sort of neck here So I'm just putting in two little curves, coming right out from the sides of the column of the bauble, and that will sort of denote my neck. Okay, and then I'm not happy with that one. Let's uh, let's adjust him. Okay, and then we want to put a lid on the top. So we're using a cylinder shape here for the lid so some of them go in dips and get quite fancy but we're just going to use a bog standard sort of cylinder so we're going to put in a very slight curve that follows with the line of the top of the bore bore here so just a little bit of a curve okay remembering that I need space in between the ball ball and the lid so I don't want it flush with that curve with that neck that I've already put in so I want just a bit of a straight line up if you want to use a ruler so that you uh, you're perfectly in line then feel free to do that I'm just freehanding this let me just um okay and then we need a top so again, using that cylinder shape, I'm going to use a slight curve on it so that it's in keeping with the bottom and with the top of the ball ball. So we've got a little lid shape going on as well. Okay, 
Now, now that you've got the basic shape done, if you then wanted to add some notches in, so on a ball ball, they sort of come down and then you've got a little bit coming up and then down and then up. You could go and do that now, that sort of scalloped effect. I'm just gonna keep it simple so that uh, we can concentrate more on the lights and the darks and getting getting the um the shadows and highlights correct okay so let's just make sure i'm happy with that shape okay so then we need a hook for our ribbon to go on so using this center line so here we want to, i want to start my hook from here and it's going to be a circular shape but we're not going to see the full circle because that sits on the top that we can't see. So I'm just going to pop in a little circular shape. Okay. And there's our little hook. And then we've got our ribbon coming out. So our ribbon is going to come from down behind and up in front of the hook. So if we start here, or our string, a little bit of gold string. So we just want to line down through and out of the front. And then my idea was is that this ribbon would sort of sit from the top of the Christmas card. So say if you're your card was here the ribbon would sit at the top and look like the ball ball was coming down from the top of the card okay right so there we go we've got our, our ball ball shape done now so that was uh, that was pretty simple so the main things we want to think about when we're doing this bauble, as with any spherical object, is the lighting. So let's say that our light source, our main light source, is going to be here. So our light is coming from this side and it's going to hit here. So we're going to have an area of white on this side. Same with this little lid here. We're going to have an area of light on this right hand side. So we want to preserve those and stay away from them. So we're going to build up just as normal from our darkest value to our lightest value, staying away from the white areas and leaving those plain. Now, as with any other object, where we, we have our main highlight here, as we've just spoke about, but then we're also gonna get some reflected light on the opposite side. It's not gonna be as bright as our main highlight, it's going to be diffused, but there will still be some reflected light. So where you may think that this area here, right along this crisp edge, would be a darkish shadow, it won't. It'll be just slightly inwards. So our darkest area, it's going to be sort of around here, and then we're gonna have this little band of reflected light where um, the light is bouncing off another object back onto the ball ball. So just this little soft highlight around the edge there. So those are the things that we want to keep in mind and that's what's going to help us to achieve that 3D look and to make it look a bit realistic. So let's just dust that off my page, I don't like it. So we'll make a start and we're going to start on the ball ball and as I said, we're going to use our darkest colour first and then build up and leave our white areas and create our highlight. So the first colour that I'm going to use for this is Caput Morton Violet. We're going to be going along in the same fashion that we always do. So we're going to be using um, very light pressure, small circular motions, and we're going to be building up this sphere to create our little highlight in the centre. So I'm just going to take my putty rubber and I'm going to lighten the neck. So, in fact, I'm going to lighten all of the dark graphite from the body of the um, the body of the ball ball. Just 
Oh, and as I'm doing that, my camera's shaking. Sorry, I'll uh, do it a bit more gently. Okay. Okay, now another thing is, I should have mentioned this just, so where we have this neck here, there is going to be a dark band where it dips in, so there's going to be a dark shadow that sits there, but then there's also going to be a tiny little bright highlight just inside that as well. So we'll, uh, we're going to tack that in a bit as well. So right, let's make a start. Right, so my Caput Morton Violet, I'm going to start plotting that in. And I'm going to take it as far as I want it to go, leaving that thin bit of reflected light at the edge, as we spoke about. So I'm going to bring it all the way around. Nice light pressure, small circular motions. So don't worry about the fact that it looks like we're creating a line at the moment. We just want to be going around and leaving that edge for now and establishing where that edge is going to be. It's not a hard edge. It's a nice soft edge. bringing it around this side and I'm going to start tapering it off about here and then I'm going to work on the inside of it and start building up the colour for our darkest area So you'll stick to your nice light pressure and small circular motions throughout this. In reality, we'll probably add two layers of each colour. So we'll do a whole, the whole bauble with a layer of each colour and then we'll go back and repeat just to make sure we've got the saturation that we want. So you can see we've got a nice edge left now with reflected highlight or reflected light rather and just working in all of the dark to create our main band of shadow. I'm going to continue my edge coming around to the top here and it's going to come higher on this side because our highlight is sitting here so it's going to fade away as it comes around to our highlight there and so it's sort of going in a, a crescent moon shape
I'm just going to bring a bit over the top. And then I'm going to start fading it out just along the top here. Okay. And I'm going to reduce the pressure even further so I can sort of fade this out into nothing as we come into that white space. So I'm barely touching the paper here, just creating a nice gentle graduation. Okay. And while we've got this cap up more to melt, I want to add in the dark area that I spoke about that sits across the top here. So coming from this curve here, we're going to add in this little area, this little band of dark that sits across the top there. So we're still using those little circular motions there. And then I'm also going to add in, I'm going to stroke just underneath the lid, just getting a better position, just to create an area of shadow underneath that lid too. Okay, so we've got two sort of little bands there going on. And then we'll fade this out, this bottom one, with nice light pressure. it comes towards the body so it'll meet our area of dark that we've put down just there okay right so we're going to go in with our next color now and for me that's dark red and we're going to go over everything that we've done and then we're going to come further into our white space so still using exactly the same pressure as before, nice, gentle, light pressure, small circular motions. You just want to cover the whole area of the Caput Morton Violet first. So we just want another nice, even layer of this over the top of what we've done. Don't worry about your white space for now, just cover, cover everything that you've done first. And the reason that I chose red actually is because if you I want to add a pattern to this later and say so if I want that pattern to be like a white frosted pattern or a gold pattern it's going to stand out against the red whereas if I'd chosen a gold bauble you wouldn't have seen it so much and there wouldn't be a distinction between the lid and the bauble and I wanted you to get an idea of the two different colours. So that was why why I chose a red one. So 
So I'm doing all of the, the darker areas first and then I'll go to the lighter areas afterwards. Okay, so now we're coming to the edge here. So lightening the pressure and I want to extend this colour up into the white space. So coming around a little bit and just extending upwards and then exactly the same going to go into the white space here and extend our colour. So let's do the inside first. Nice, very light pressure. And just extend into the white slightly. And again, as we come around here. So we're already creating the space for that highlight to sit in. Coming around the top and then extending further. And we come to about there. And then we'll go over our little, little band of dark up there. And just here, I'm going to go over my little shadow up here as well. And then I'm just going to extend down the side of that curve very gently and just come inside slightly. A little bit fiddly here. And then I'm just going to line that curve there as well and again just come inside slightly. Coming slightly further from this side. So we've got a little gap now. Okay, and then we're going to just very slightly extend into the white space for the reflected light that we left. Very, very slightly. We don't want to close the gap yet and get to sort of the edge of the graphite. We just want to come a little bit further in. So that every time we've put a layer down, we're getting further and further out towards the edge. And just nice light pressure.
It's going to extend here slightly as well. Okay, so that's our second layer down. Okay, so we'll go to our third layer and I'm going to use deep red now. So exactly the same process. We're going over everything that we've done before. Nice light pressure. So cover the previous layers first and then again we'll extend into the white. So I'm concentrating on the darker area first. And getting that colour down. So we're building the saturation now. As you can see, we've still got some tooth of the paper that's showing through, and I think that's um, I think that's still going to be there even when we've put our fourth layer on. So we will more than likely definitely be going back over and doing the whole process again because we want to fill the tooth of the paper and have a nice solid saturation, and having nice sharp pencils. Um, really helps to fill the tooth nice and evenly. If you're working with a blunt pencil, it just goes over all the little, um, all the little hills and valleys in the tooth of the paper, and it doesn't fill them as um, as smoothly as it does when you're working with sharp pencils. So I know that it eats your pencils away a lot, but it helps your work. So don't work with blunt pencils. There are some instances where blunt pencils are great and we want to use the tooth of the paper to um, add some texture to our drawing, but this isn't one of them. When we're working with a nice shiny spherical object, we want that tooth filled and we want a nice full saturation. So sharpen your pencils as often as you need to. You'll see me frequently turn mine so that I can retain the sharpest edge and use that. Okay, so we're coming up to the edge now. So I'm just going to sharpen this red and then I'm just going to jump back up there to do um, that part of the dark. So let's pop back up here. All this filled in first. And come up to the neck. Okay. And then just around to the side. Okay, and now I'm going to start to lift the pressure. Work into that light a bit. And again, come further into this white space. And 
and just close in the gap slightly more, slightly further. So every time you work inward, you're lightening the pressure to barely touch in the paper. And that's what's going to give you that nice gradual fade. slightly higher up now and around this edge barely touching here and then we're almost closing the gap there so that the two the two bits meet Okay, right, and again, we're just going to very gently go around the edge into that band of light and just come out slightly further. Nice and gently. And working in these small circular motions stops you from getting any harsh edges as well. So on objects where you don't want harsh edges, especially with botanicals and things like that, you know, use your circular strokes. Just come a little bit further from the top there. Okay, and then again, let's go into our, the neck, so I'm just sort of stroking there. Going over our dark bands. Coming in slightly. Just going to stroke over that shadow under lid. And then I'm going to bring my colour inwards a little bit more. So we've just got that little highlight off to the one side there. Okay. So my last red is going to be Deep Scarlet. And again, we're doing exactly the same thing. So going over everything we've done. And you may find that on the darker areas now, you need to very slightly increase your pressure a little bit, just in the darkest areas. And you'll find that the more layers you put down, the more frequently you need to sharpen your pencils and keep them nice and sharp. Because as we slightly increase the pressure, the pencil wears out slightly quicker. So... But you can see that we're starting to really build that saturation now.
Okay, coming around, just making sure that all of that darkest area is covered first. And then I'll go and sharpen the pencil and we'll start on the lighter areas. Okay, so I'll just sharpen my pencil and then I'll start working over the uh, the lighter bits. So lightening the pressure again as we come into the lighter areas. Still just covering everything that we've done for now. I'm not going into the white space just yet. Just working from the darker areas outwards in towards the white. Okay, and now I'm going to start coming slightly further in, very gently again, barely touching the paper. Just darkening that area up there slightly. Okay, so that is going to be an uh, area of main highlight there. Okay, and now we can just come in up to this neck again. Just adding another layer to that. And then again, let's go around the outside. Coming out towards the edge. And by now we should only have a really thin gap between the edge of the bauble where the graphite line is and the color. And it should be nice and pale and light.
have a look. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same process again. We're going to layer from our darkest to our light. So if you want to skip this bit, then that's absolutely fine. If you want to stay with me and do it along with me, then that's great as well. So back to our Caput Morton Violet. And again, we're going to go over our darkest area. Now we will need a tiny bit more pressure. Uh, again, because, you know, we've got some layers down. So we're going to need to go in. Just a tiny bit harder, not, you know, not hard pressure whatsoever, but just a little bit harder than we went before. So keep this dark right in the places where we want our deepest shadow to be, just where we did it the last time. So make sure you retain that slight lighter edge. And again, make sure your pencils are nice and sharp because we want to try and fill in the tooth of the paper now and get things nice and smooth. Okay, so bringing it up again in that sort of crescent moon shape. Still going in those circular strokes. And up towards the tip there. And then fading out around here. And then again, just really light pressure to just create a nice fade into the lighter area. And of course, this is going to look slightly garish until we've got the next couple of layers on the top, so don't worry. Just trust in the process. Okay, and then just fading out in this bit again. Right, and then let's go back to our little dark band up here and just redefine that, give it a bit more depth on the neck. And that shadow is just there. Okay, and then moving on, we'll go to the dark red. It's just dust off, got a little bit of dust there. If any of your dust falls onto your paper, just use a putty rubber to pick it back up again. Okay, so over all of the areas that we covered the first time with the dark red. So over all of that Caput Morton Violet that we've done. Much lighter pressure when you come to that outside edge where we're keeping that light.
just do the bottom bit first. If you work methodically and you work, you know, in a rhythm, it's much easier to remember where you've been and where you haven't. So going over each layer individually first. So over the cap of Morton Violet and then extending it slightly. I mean, really, I should have been working one side to the other, but never mind. Okay, and now we'll extend further, just as we did before, and further into the lighter areas. And then I'm lifting the pressure as we get to the lighter edges. And just take a look as you're going around and make sure that you know that your working and your highlight is in a spherical shape and then it's not sort of become egg shaped or anything like that you want it nice and round so just take a look and build up so that you've got that nice sphere Just dust off. So you can see here now I've created marks on the paper where I've just dusted. So I'm just going to lift that off with the putter rubber and it'll come off nice and cleanly. Okay. So let's just make sure I'm completely happy with that. Make sure this edge is okay. Over here. Sometimes it's nice to just sit back and have a look from a distance because when you're working up close to things, um, it's difficult to see sometimes. So take a good sit back and have a look. Okay, and then again, let's come up into this area. Deepen up that area on the neck there and slightly further in there. Okay, right, and then we'll move on to our next colour, which was deep red. And so let's bring another layer of that in. So again, exactly the same. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be good. I'm going to start up here where I should have started before and work my way around. So completely covering everything that we've done. And again, I'm having to press slightly firmer, slightly more firmly. Because we're really starting to build up now. I'm trying to use the point of the pencil to get into all those tiny little white spaces. So 
so I'm continually turning my pencil finding the sharpest area and then when we run out of sharp areas we then go and sharpen it lighter pressure again when we get to that edge and lighter pressure again as we come to the center Okay, so I'm just going to sharpen that. Okay, we're getting something really nice, solid colour now. And don't forget to lift as we come around the edges here. And lighten the pressure. And then let's work lightly into the centre again. Gonna sharpen my pencil again. And just dust off.
And as we come to this center area, we don't, you know, don't mind having a bit of that white texture showing through because it just adds to the highlight. But in the main areas of full saturation, such as here, you know, we don't want to see that white poking through and that's why we want it completely covered. But coming to here, you don't mind. It just adds to the effect, that soft glow. So it just brings down a little bit. Okay. And then again, let's come up into our neck of the bauble. Find the edge there. Over our shadow. And then closing the gap slightly further on that little highlight there. And then just very gently go around the edge again. Okay. Okay, and then on to our last layer, our deep scarlet. So once again, let's go over everything we've done. So we've got eight layers down now. So it just shows you how much, um, how many layers your paper can actually take. Okay, and then I think I'll just go and sharpen that again. Let's continue. So I'm lightening the pressure again now as I'm coming around 
the highlight area. Okay, and then let's work our way in. Again, barely touching the paper as we're going around that main highlight in the centre. So just building up nice and slowly and softly. You can always go back and darken. It's harder to lighten. So keep it nice and light and build up nice and slowly and softly. Okay, let's just check all the edges now. So I'll just go around and make sure that the edges are all nice and soft and even. Go around this side. So we're almost touching the graphite now, just not quite. And again, I'm barely skimming the paper with the pencil. Okay, and then we'll come into our neck again. And just further deepen that slightly. Okay. So to make the outer area smooth, we're going to go over with a little blend layer of white. So just to get that reflected light nice and soft and smooth. So we're just going to go around the edge with our white and just blend that light feathered colour just with the tip of the pencil nice and softly. We don't want to come too far in because we don't want the white going in any further. We just want to keep it right on the edge on the outside. And we just want to blend the very edge of that colour and make it nice and soft. So 
And you can go over it a couple of times, dust off. And just create that nice diffused light at the edge there. Okay, let's just work our way around. And up to the neck there. Let's just have a good look. Okay. Just work it a little bit more in places if you feel you need to. Okay, and now I'm going to take the um, the last colour we used, the Deep Scarlet, and I'm just going to very gently go around that edge again. And just brighten up very slightly, right on the edge where the white meets the red. And just give that edge a brighter appearance. So I'm not going all the way into the white, just touching the edge of it. making it a little bit brighter very gently when I get to this edge here where the highlight is okay I'm just going to dust off and just take my white one last time and just go over any areas that I feel need it. So just there. Okay, now I'm going to sharpen my white. And I'm just going to take my Tombow Mono Eraser and I'm just going to go around and get rid of any excess graphite from the edge. And I'm using it on the side, so I'm using that sharp edge just to get rid of any excess graphite that we can see. And then I'm just going to go over and pick up the dust with the putty rubber. So you can make it into a sort of flat pointed edge and just pick up that dust. Let's continue.
Okay, let's remove that. Okay. Alright, so that's all the dust removed there. So we sharpen the white, and that's because I don't want any pigment of red left on the tip of my white. I want to come into these two highlights and where it's brightest, if I go in with the pencil we've just used with all the red on, it's going to um, go into the center of my highlight and I don't want that. So I've sharpened it and I've also sharpened it on the sanding block just to get rid of any pink from the very tip. So I'm gonna come in to almost the center, work in small circular motions Work my way outward so I'm not pulling red into the center. I'm going from the center out and I'm just very slightly blending and diffusing that area around the main highlight just to give it a little bit of a pinky tone like we did with the outer edge. We're not coming all the way into the main colour, we're just staying around the edge of the highlight. And just go around in a ring so you're not dragging it into the middle. Okay. That's just going to soften that colour. And make it a bit more glowy. Okay, let's just dust that off. So you can see now, if you look at uh, the point of my pencil, I hope you can see, it's got some red pigment attached to it where I've just gone round. So that's what we want to avoid. So I'm just going to sharpen it again. Make sure my tip's nice and clean. And then we're going to go into this little highlight here. So again, we're going to start in the center, work our way out, and just softly diffuse around the edges of that little highlight there. Okay, let's just dust that off. Right. Okay, so I'm all right. I'm quite pleased with how the uh, the bubbles look in. So let's go and move on and do the little gold lid. So I'm going to start with our darkest colour, and for the lid, that's going to be raw umber. So let's just lighten the graphite here. And on on our little hook as well. Okay, right, so again, our highlight is on this side, our light's coming from here. So we're going to stroke an edge down here. And I hope I said that was raw umber. So we're just gonna stroke our edge down and I'm gonna stroke a little bit of an edge just over the top there. and a little bit over the top there, just stop in here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna work in tiny little circular motions, just bring in a little bit of this in from the side to create the depth in our shadow. You could go slightly darker than this if you wanted to. You could use um, a nougat or a bista or something like that. And then start fading it out as we come towards the center there, okay? And then we're also going to stroke down an edge on this side, tiny little bit here. And then we're just gonna come in a little bit of the way here, not much. So just a, just a fraction of a dark edge on this side. Okay. 
All right, so then we'll move to our next colour, which is brown ochre. We're going to go over the raw rumba. And then work our way inwards. So coming slightly into the white space, just as we've been doing with the ball ball. Building up nice and slowly and working inwards. Make sure our edge is nice and crisp. Okay, and then we're going to do the same on this side. So over what we've just done and just coming in very, very slightly. Just there. Right, then we'll move to our next colour, which is yellow ochre. And again, do exactly the same. So we're going over what we've done. And then gently working our way into the centre. Just very gently stroking a little bit of an edge at the top there. Just coming into about there. Just dust that off. Same on the other side, over what we've done. And just coming in a tiny little bit. Just there. And then to our next colour, which is Naples Yellow. Let's just dust off again. And then I'm not going over the dark with the Naples Yellow. I'm going to start from sort of this point here. And then work that in. Work it in till I get towards the centre. Lift the pressure. As it comes towards the centre highlight. Again, not right up to the edge. Just slightly further in. And we want to leave that band of white for our highlight. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go over that again, and I am just going to add a tiny little bit of walnut brown just to this very darkest area, right at the side here. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of an outline and just bring a tiny little bit in, just to really define that little bit of shade there. And we'll just stroke an edge on this side. Okay, and then we'll go in with the rest of our colours again. So the raw rumber first. Just strengthen everything up and build the saturation. So a little bit of that in. And then the brown ochre. Take that in just a little bit further, just as we did before. And again on this side. And then the light yellow ochre. just working it in just building everything up a little bit and then lastly the Naples yellow and again not taking that yellow over the very dark just concentrating it in the center And leaving our band of light. Okay, let's just dust that off. And then we're going to take our white again and just soften the edge 
is the yellow. off okay I'm just going to really sharpen up the uh, raw umber on the sanding block so it's got a really nice point to it nice and sharp and then I'm just going to stroke in an edge just over the top there and do stuff and then just over here just to define the edges there fill in that little gap that's there okay and then I'm going to do the same at the bottom so just going over and just defining the edge Just want to make dead sure we've got this area of shadow sitting directly under the lid. Okay, now I'm just going to clean up the dust with the putty rubber from around the edge there. Okay, and then while that raw rumber is nice and sharp, we'll go into our little hook. So we're going to bring it up here, this side's in the dark, so we're going to have the raw ember there, we've got the ribbon coming through, that's okay, then we're going to come up from the bottom here, and we're going to leave a little gap there. Then I'm going to sharpen the light yellow ochre on the sanding block. Continue around with that a little bit, still leaving a tiny gap just where the highlight is. Sharpen more white. on the sanding block and just use the white to pull the yellow ochre through and create our highlights. Just there. Okay. Right, so for our string, I want to add a little bit of bling. So you can use a gold gel pen or gold paint or a gold glitter glue or anything nice and gold and a bit blingy for this. So I'm going to use uh, this palette that I've got from Colero and it's Pearl Colours Vintage. Now most of Colero's palettes have gold in and Tibet Gold is my favourite. Um, and you can buy them in singles as well, but um, use any gold that you've got. You can, you know, you really don't have to have this or use it, just use any kind of gold. So I'm gonna be using the Tibet gold and it looks like this on the inside. They're so pretty, They're so gorgeous. Right, and with these, I'll just show you what you do. So you've got your palette and I always save a brush that's just for this paint because it does um it is thick it can clog up your brush you need to keep them nice and conditioned and um, but you can see it sort of stains around the barrel so i just keep a brush just for this so you pop a little bit of water into the paint into the uh in, right into the pan just pop a few drops in and you leave it to sit for a minute or so and then that will sort of dissolve the paint and it'll be thick enough to work with. So I'll just let that sit for a minute. And then I'm using a very, very fine brush 
it's a number two silver black velvet nice pointy sharp brush that i always use for watercolor and we're going to paint on our string so let's see if that's ready so you can give it a little bit of a stir while it's in the palette just to help it dissolve it's not quite ready yet it's still too uh too liquidy so when it's nice and thick that's when you want to use it so but it'll just add just something to add a nice little touch of uh of glimmer to the design because if you're using this on a christmas card which is the intended use um you know you haven't got to be worried about everything being archival and light fast and everything else that's only for for sort of your uh, your best works so right my paint's ready now so i'm going to pick up the paint on the brush and using the tip of the brush we're just going to stroke that line on this paint's quite thick so i don't need to worry about the graphite underneath so this line comes from behind the ring so i'm going to start just at the back of it and I'm just going to sweep up a nice line, just there. Make sure it comes right to the hook, so it comes behind and then it's going to come in front of the hook so I can take it over on this side. Just need a little bit more paint. And the good thing is about these pans, um, you can re-wet them and you're not losing any paint because it just dries back down again, straight into the pan. So you're not, uh, it's, it's really good in that way. Okay, so just painting up your little string there. All right. Okay, so that's, that's a bauble complete. Now, if you wanted to, while you were using that paint, you could go along and you could create a pattern on here. You could do like a snowflake or some dots and wiggly lines and stuff like that. And you can decorate your bauble however you want to. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, make a bit more of a composition and create some more baubles on the page. You could sort of have like, do a smaller one at the back here and then maybe a long one sort of coming behind and hanging down here there's lots of different options you can you know you can fill it as you want to so i'm just going to show you how the paint sits on top of the colored pencil so we'll just do sort of i don't know maybe a row of dots a row of spots along this bauble so this is just for showing you how it works Okay, so we've got to remember that our bauble is spherical, so our lines, unless it's dead in the centre, is not going to be straight across. It's going to follow the curve of the bauble. So say if we've got some dots, we'll just put a couple. Coming along. So I'm just wiggling the brush to create circle you could use a dotting tool as well if you wanted to i'm trying to keep them evenly spaced and you could also do this with a gel pen again or some glitter glue glitter glue would look fab some nice gold glitter so you notice i've come down in a curve and then I'm going to go back up in a slight curve as well. So that we follow the curve of the bauble. Okay. So some nice little gold dots. And put another one just here. And remember that on the edges they're going they're not going to be so much perfect circles they're going to be more sort of um ovals than circles put another little bit of one here okay and then you could do that across the top and across the middle and maybe fill in with 
some squiggly lines or you could use white and do some nice snowflake patterns whatever you want to do so there we go there's our there's our bauble so i hope you've enjoyed this i hope that um you've learned something about spherical objects and shading spherical objects and uh until next time take care and i'll see you soon bye bye